Good day, my lovely students. You are all welcome to today's class. I remain Ayewole Alaba Adepeju. I hope you are all keeping safe. Please stay indoor. And if you need to go out, ensure you use your facial mask and please carry on your hand sanitizer with you wherever you go and maintain the social distance. Today, we are going to be seeing two videos. One on how to prepare a cultural media or solution, and the second one on how to introduce bacteria on our cultured media, that is the cultural media we have prepared. Like I said earlier on, our topic for this week is preparation of a cultural media and solution under the subtopic of how to use different methods of culturing bacteria on our prepared agar medium. But before we proceed, let's see the learning objectives for today's class. At the end of today's class, you should all be able to state the precautions to be observed before preparing a cultural media in the laboratory. You should also be able to prepare a cultural solution aseptically that is in a sterile environment. Also, cultural bacteria on how to prepare cultural material using different methods. And finally, you should be able to identify the type of organism or bacteria that have gone on the cultural media. Like I said earlier on, today we are going to be seeing two videos. The first one I'm about to share is how to prepare a cultural solution or media. In order to grow, cells need very specific environmental conditions, food, energy, proper temperature, and humidity. When growing cells in the lab, we have to create these conditions using culture media. Solid culture media is a mixture of agar and nutrients poured into petri dishes. In this exercise, we'll demonstrate the steps for preparing brain heart infusion agar. Always check the lot number and expiration date. The right panel lists the composition of the media and the final pH. First, add 100 milliliters of deionized water to a graduated cylinder. Place a stir bar in a 250 milliliter flask. For the next step, we need an analytical balance. Place a weigh boat onto the balance pan. Press the tear key to zero out the weigh boat. Use a lab scoop to add 5.2 grams of brain heart infusion agar to the weigh boat. Now add the powder to the flask. Add about 75 milliliters of deionized water. Place the flask onto a stir plate. If you're using a combination hot plate and stir plate, be sure that the heat is turned off. After about two minutes, add the remaining 25 milliliters of water from the graduated cylinder. Stir the solution until all of the visible clumps have been broken down. Cover the flask with aluminum foil. We are using foil cupcake wrappers because they're the perfect size. Place a piece of autoclave tape over the foil and label it with the media name. Next, use the autoclave to sterilize the media. The heat from the autoclave will also help the agar to properly dissolve in the water. Power on the autoclave and make sure the drain valve is closed. Add deionized water to the level indicator line. Place the flask of culture media into the basket. Insert the basket, close the lid, and turn the handle to create an airtight seal. Use the control panel to set the mode to sterilize. The temperature to 121 degrees Celsius will run this cycle for 17 minutes. While it's running, enter the date and time and the operation details in the log and initial. Once the cycle ends and the pressure gauge reads zero PSI, Use heat-resistant gloves to slowly open and remove the sterilized flask. Once the media has cooled, it will solidify. Upside down to prevent moisture from condensing of the angle.
Yes, from that video, from that video we have just watched, that's a simple method or a simple way of how to prepare our cultural media. You can see from the video that the first thing you are supposed to do is the environment you are going to work in, that is your laboratory, must be sterile. Locked all windows, locked all the door, and you yourself, you have to be sterile by wearing your hand glove, using nose masks or facial masks, ensure that you use a safety goggle, and above all, put on your laboratory safety coat. And once you are about to start, disinfect the working area so that all germs or organisms present around you will be dead before you start your cultural media. And you must also ensure that when you want to open the autoclave, you use an hand glove because it is usually very hot. Be mindful of the steam that comes out from the autoclave. Always keep your face aside before you open it. And remember to always put a sterile tablet inside the conical flax so it will help steer the content of the solution. The second video I'm about to share to you now is how to culture bacteria in our already prepared agar plate or medium. Please, I want you to listen attentively and watch the procedure with keen interest. Yes, these are the objective of today's. Culture of bacteria. A microbiological culture is a method of multiplying microbial organisms by letting them reproduce in a predetermined culture media under controlled laboratory conditions. A culture helps us to obtain definitive identification and characterization of bacteria, grow and isolate all bacteria present in an infection, determine which bacteria is most likely causing infection and which bacteria is likely a contaminant or colonizer, to test antimicrobial susceptibility, to stock bacterial strains for further use, Inoculation of culture media. Examine prepared media immediately before inoculation. Look for evidence of contamination, uneven filling, or bubbles on surface of agar. Color changes, hemolysis, and signs of dehydration, such as shrinking and cracking. Discard any defective plates or tubes. When inoculating, or seeding a culture media, an aseptic technique must always be used. This will prevent contamination of cultures and specimens, prevent infection of the laboratory worker and the environment. Aseptic techniques. Wear protective clothing, wash hands after handling infected material, and never mouth peppered. Eat, drink, or smoke in the laboratory. Flame to sterilize wire loops, straight wires, and metal forceps before and after use. Flame the necks of specimen bottles, culture bottles, and tubes after removing and before replacing caps or plugs. When inoculating, do not let the tops or caps of bottles and tubes touch an unsterile surface. This can be avoided by holding the top or cap in the hand. Always use racks to hold tubes and bottles containing specimens or culture media. Make slight preparations from specimens after inoculating the culture media. Decontaminate the workbench before starting the day's work and after finishing. Use a safety cabinet when working with hazardous pathogens. Culture methods. The various culture methods that are used in a basic microbiology laboratory are street culture, lawn culture, stroke culture, staff culture, liquid culture, and anaerobic culture methods. In this section, 
we will only deal with aerobic culture like you have seen from the video i've just played we have different cultural methods but we, the one that we're talking about today is the anaerobic culture method please i want you to listen to this video and watch it carefully let's play on Sorry about that. During inoculation, cultural media should be uncovered. The inoculation of media in petri dishes is referred to as breathing out. Or even a third of a plate can be used especially when using selected media. The area of the plate to give separate colonies. Before inoculating a plate of culture medium, check if the surface of the medium is dry. Moist surfaces will not yield single colonies. If the surface is wet, the plate is kept inverted, resting it on the lid to ensure proper drying. Usually 30 to 40 minutes incubation at 35 to 37 degrees centigrade is sufficient to dry the surface of an agar plate. For a right-handed person, the Bunsen burner and the inoculating instruments should be placed on the right and cultures and media should be placed to the back and left. Uninoculated plates, plate cultures and patient specimens should be kept with the lids touching the bench and the plate with the media on the top. The caps and plugs of bottles and tubes should be loosened for easy removal while inoculating. Media to be inoculated should be labeled with a glass marking pen or pencil or self-adhesive label indicating the lab number of the specimen and date. Labeling should be done on the bottom of the petri dishes and on tubes or bottles rather than the lids or caps because there is always a chance of misplacing the lids or caps. Labels should be checked again at the time of inoculation. During inoculation, the right hand holding the inoculating instrument charged with the culture material should be moved as little as possible and the media should be brought closer with the left hand. Let's begin with the first culture method, streak culture. This method is used to inoculate solid medium in a plate or petri dish, and the objective is to obtain isolated colonies of the bacterium. All the general precautions while inoculating media are to be followed. Label the base of plate which is to be inoculated before you start the procedure. Loosen the cap or cotton wool plug of the bottle or test tube containing the broth culture. Remove the cap or cotton wool plug of the bottle or test tube with a little finger of your right hand and flame the neck. Load the inoculum onto a sterilized wire loop. Flame the neck of the bottle or test tube and replace the cap or plug. Lift the base of the plate containing the medium in your left hand and hold it using your thumb and middle finger. Spread the inoculum thoroughly over area A. This is called the well inoculum. Re-sterilize the loop and let it cool down. Use the loop to draw three or four parallel lines from the well inoculum onto the fresh surface of the medium. Again sterilize the loop and allow it to cool down. Then draw three or four parallel lines from the area B onto the fresh surface of the medium. Repeat the process till the surface of the medium is adequately covered, taking care to sterilize the loop after each inoculation. At each step, the inoculum is derived from the most distal part 
of the immediately preceding strokes. Close the lid of the plate and intubate it overnight at 37 degrees centigrade. Isolated colonies of the bacteria can be observed on the surface of the medium next day. Lawn culture. This culture medium yields a uniform or a carpet-like growth of the bacterium over the surface of the medium. This method is mainly used for antimicrobial susceptibility testing. It may also be used for bacteriophage typing and for the preparation of bacterial antigens and vaccines. Lawn cultures are prepared by flooding the surface of the plate. So the preferred method as will be described here. All the general precautions for an inoculating medium are the which is to be inoculated before you start the procedure. Loosen the cap or cotton wool plug of the bottle or test tube containing the broth culture. Remove the cap or cotton wool plug of the bottle or test tube with the little finger of your right hand and flame the neck. Load the inoculum onto a sterilized cotton swab. Squeeze out the extra inoculum by pressing the swab to the side of the test tube or bottle. Flame the neck of the bottle or test tube and replace the cap or plug. Lift the base of the plate containing the medium in your left hand and hold it using your thumb and middle finger. Streak the swab all over the surface of the medium thrice, rotating the plate through 60 degrees after each application. When the whole plate is covered with the inoculum, pass the swab around the edge of the medium. Discard the swab in a disinfectant solution. Allow the plate to dry for a few minutes with the lid closed at the room temperature. The antibiotic discs can now be placed on the inoculated plate using sterile forceps, sterile needle tip, or an antibiotic disc dispenser. Incubate the plate overnight at 35 to 37 degrees centigrade and read the results next day. Stroke culture. This method is generally used for inoculating agar slants or slopes. It is used for obtaining pure growth for slight agglutination and other diagnostic tests. Take a tube or a bottle with an agar slant medium and label it before inoculating. Loosen the cotton plug or cap. Remove the cap or cotton wool plug of the bottle or test tube with the broth culture with the little finger of your right hand and flame the neck. Load the inoculum onto a sterilized wire loop. Hold the agar slant medium in your left hand and remove the cotton plug or cap of the agar slant medium with the little finger of your hand and flame the neck. Then, using the loaded inoculating wire loop, gently streak across the surface of the slant in a zigzag fashion, taking care not to break the agar with the loop. Flame the mouth of the slant again and replace the plug or cap. Sterilize the loop after the inoculation. Incubate the agar slant medium overnight at 35 to 37 degrees centigrade. Stab culture. This method is mainly used to demonstrate gelatin liquefaction, motility, or to study oxygen requirements of bacteria. It is also used to prepare stock cultures. It is performed by puncturing a suitable solid medium with a loaded inoculated wire. Take a tube or bottle with an agar medium and label it before inoculating. Load the inoculum onto a sterilized inoculating wire. Hold the agar medium in your left hand and remove the cotton plug or cap of the agar slant medium with the little finger of your hand and flame the neck. Then, Plunge the loaded inoculating wire into the center of the medium in a straight line, taking care to withdraw the wire in the same line to avoid splitting the medium. Flame the mouth of the slant again and replace the plug or cap.
sterilize the wire after the inoculation. Incubate the agar medium upright at 35 to 37 degrees centigrade overnight. Growth is indicated by turbidity of the medium along the line of inoculation. Liquid culture. Liquid media can also be inoculated by a charged loop, pipette or syringe. The result is commonly known as broth culture. Liquid or broth cultures are prepared for many purposes like inoculating solid media, biochemical tests, water sterility tests, blood cultures, etc. Inoculating liquid medium using a loop is described here. Take any suitable sterile liquid medium like peptone water, BHI broth, etc. and label it before inoculation. Loosen the plug or cap. Keep the specimen or culture plate from which a colony has to be inoculated ready. Sterilize your inoculating loop and allow it to cool down. Remove the lid of the culture plate and pick an isolated colony. Replace the lid. Hold the liquid medium in your left hand and remove the cotton plug or cap with the little finger of your hand and flame the neck. Now, apply the medium or water at an angle of 45 degrees and deposit the inoculum on its wall above the surface of the medium. Or cap. When the tube is turned to its vertical position, the inoculum is well below the surface of the liquid. Sterilize the wire loop before keeping it down. Incubate the liquid medium. Growth is indicated by the turbidity of the medium, unlike the formation of isolated columns or solid medium. Subculture. Subculture is a technique by which a new culture of bacteria can be obtained on a fresh medium from an old culture. A few uses of the technique are sufficient number of colonies of bacteria when the primary growth medium has very few colonies. To obtain pure colonies from a medium with mixed growth. To prolong the life of a bacteria by maintaining stock cultures. Subculturing is basically a technique of transferring bacterial colonies from a primary growth medium to a secondary medium. Take a sterile loop and load it with a portion of an isolated colony on the primary medium. Transfer it to a suitable medium by the streak method, which has been described earlier. When making transfers during subcultures, it is advantageous to flame the loop between each set of streaks on the surface of the medium. This avoids over inoculation and ensures the growth of isolated colonies. Culture of specimens. You Before we go on, I purposely pause that video. If you are watching this video with keen interest, you notice there are three words keep coming up. The first one is sterilized. The second one incubates. And the third one is label. Before anything is done, please ensure you sterilize your working area. Sterilize all equipment you are going to use, your wire, your inoculating wire, your inoculating loop, even the tip of the test tube and flax need to be flamed. That is to kill any surrounding germs present in that working environment. And please ensure you label your plates, any material you are using, ensure you label it with a paper tape, then use a marker to write on it. And when you are uh, incubating, please incubate at the appropriate temperature, always between 35 to 37 degrees Celsius for about 24 hours. If you are really following this video, you will notice that these three key, uh, key words keep coming up, label, sterilize, and incubate. Please, let's continue with the video. Urine culture. Urine is cultured for isolation of common agents of urinary tract infection. A measured amount of urine is inoculated onto appropriate media. Use of blood agar and Leconchi agar allow detection of most gram-negative bacilli and gram-positive cocci. 
The urine should be mixed thoroughly before plating. The plates are inoculated using calibrated loops so that number of colonies of bacteria can be counted, which can be further used to calculate the number of viable bacteria per milliliter of urine. This method is called the standard loop method and usually a loop of calibration 0 0.01 milliliters is used. Method, flame a calibrated wire inoculating loop and allow it to cool down. Label the base of plates which need to be inoculated. Mix the urine thoroughly and remove the top of the container. Insert the loop vertically into the urine allowing the urine to adhere to the loop. Spread the loop full of urine in a straight line onto the middle of the plate. Then, starting from one end of the line, spread the inoculum in a zigzag fashion across the middle line, covering an adequate portion of the surface of the acre. Without reflaming, insert the loop vertically into the urine container again and repeat the procedure for the other plate. Incubate plates for 24 hours at 35 to 37 degrees centigrade. Colony forming units or CFUs are counted on each plate and are multiplied by 100 to determine the number of microorganisms per milliliters of urine. Alternatively, multiply by 1000 if a loop of 0 0.001 milliliters Bacteria, viruses, be prepared for inoculation into different media unless the sample fluid a portion of solid stone is suspended in Like blood ego, a slight organisms like Salmonella and Shigella to be detected. This medium, along with detection of lactose fermentation, also detects the production of hydrogen sulfide by the formation of black colonies, which is characteristic of some Salmonella species. Enrichment broths. Enrichment broths like Selenite F broth are sometimes used for the enhanced recovery of Salmonella and Shigella species. These broths are inoculated with fecal suspension and incubated in air at 35 degrees centigrade for six to eight hours. Then several drops from the broth are subcultured to at least two selective medium plates. Culture method. Unless the sample is fluid, a portion of solid stool is suspended in two to three milliliters of phosphate buffered saline or in 0.1% peptone water. 
Street method of plating is used to inoculate blood agar, Makonki agar, and one selected medium like XLD if required. All plates are incubated at 35 to 37 degrees centigrade and examined at 24 and 48 hours for suspicious colonies. Sputum culture. The most common specimen used for the detection of lower respiratory tract infections is sputum. Sputum from a bacterial infection is purulent, that is, consisting of pus, contains yellow or green opaque material, as well as clear mucoid secretions. Many patients tend to expectorate saliva instead of sputum. Saliva is relatively clear and watery. The laboratory staff should be able to distinguish between a true sputum sample and saliva. Saliva samples should be rejected as culture results of saliva are very misleading. For a good sputum sample, ask the patient to cough deeply and spit the material collected in his throat directly into a sterile container. Tightly screw shut the container and wipe off any spilled material with a tissue moistened with disinfectant. The specimen should be transferred to the laboratory as soon as possible, preferably within two hours, as delicate pathogens may not survive for long. Smears for gram staining and resin staining, when required, should be made after the plates have been inoculated to avoid any chances of contamination of specimen. The methods of gram and resin staining have been described in a separate section. Culture method. Material for spare preparation for staining and culture should be taken from the most purulent portion of the sputum. Blood agar is a good medium to identify most bacterial pathogens. Sometimes chocolate agar can also be inoculated as it enhances the growth of pneumococcus and hemophilus. The plates should be inoculated using the streak plate method which has been described before. The plates should be incubated for 24 to 48 hours at 35 to 37 degrees centigrade and then examined. Pus culture. Pus for culture is often submitted to the lab on a swab. As far as possible, swabs should be avoided for sample collection as it tends to dry up the sample and trap the bacteria which are then not released onto the culture plate. Pus or exudate should be collected in a sterile screw cap bottle or a firmly stoppered tube or syringe. If, however, a swab is decided to be used, use two swabs, one for microscopy and the other for culture. A dry swab should be first moistened with sterile saline or broth and then should be taken through the depths of the wound or lesion to load it with the sample. Always inoculate the plates first and prepare smears for microscopy. Culture method. The specimen should be inoculated on two plates of blood agar, one for incubation and 27 and the other for incubation and or Nakonki agar and incubated in the way. If the specimen is obtained from swab, it should be thrown to the student from swab agar and then on to Nakonki agar. Street method of plating, which has been described earlier, should be followed. The sample should be from swab and to an overnight incubation at 37 degrees centigrade. If there is no harm of plating, they should be Special of presence of some slow growing organisms like Actinomyces, in which case it should be incubated for seven days. I believe we all enjoyed our video. I really, really enjoyed our video. It's even I learned so many other things from that video, things I think I know. I learned more. Please, 
You can see more of this video by going to the YouTube channel. You can they have different video on how to culture microorganism. From this video, I've seen that we have different methods in which we can actually culture microorganism. We have the script method, we have lawn method, stroke method, swab method, pore plate method. We have liquid culture, the one we refer to as broth. But the one we really talked about is the anaerobic culture method. Like I said earlier on, there are these three keywords sterilize, label, and incubate at, at, a, at a required temperature, which is 35, between 35 to 37 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. If after 24 hours there's no growth on any plate, you are please advised to reincubate it. If after 48 that hours there's still no growth, then you can discard the plate and start all over again. Also, from this video, I've learned that we have different agar medium. We have one called